everybody. Today's clinical pearl will describe inferior joint mobilization or inferior glide to increase shoulder abduction at the glenohumeral joint. So while we get started, we want to put, make sure that we pay attention to the scapular plane, if we can. We want to make sure that it's neutral rotation, not external, not internal. In doing so, the, it takes a little bit getting used to being able to multitask with your arm, but if you notice, my hand is on Hannah's uh, humerus, and her arm is resting in my forearm uh, at the elbow. This way, we don't wobble back and forth. Also, since I'm having her off the edge so I can sort of control uh, neutral flexion extension, um, we want to make sure that that stays as neutral too. So we're trying to minimize all of the variables. Now, as we start this inferior glide, we want to make sure that we maximize how much abduction she has before we do the inferior glide. Then, as with all mobilizations, it's really important to understand your landmarks, your anatomy, and understand where your hands are. So with Hannah, and we want to go from the clavicle and uh, the acromion process, and we, where they join is the acromioclavicular joint. We go to the end there. Now it's important. I, I see a lot of people going and right where they, they feel the, the AC joint, they start to push down. That is not doing anything. That's just depressing the whole shoulder girdle. We want to get to that, that acromion process, AC joint, and then step off. Step off till we feel the joint space and step off so we can feel the greater tubercle of the humerus. Then I'm going to grab around, making sure I'm not too high and making sure I'm not too low either. And I'm right on, just distal to the AC joint. And now in the scapular plane, I'm going to go down into an inferior glide. You can see her muscles are twitching a little bit because she doesn't necessarily like all the uh, inferior glide. But I want to bring it down and you're here not to create any kind of instability. We're here to try to get more abduction by increasing the flexibility of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. So it's going down into a grade three or grade four. I don't like to oscillate, which really is what those grades are, but I like to hold it at the end of the available capsular range and then release back. Never losing contact, but then I will do a series of these to try to increase some uh, change in the capsule. If I'm convinced that we've made some progress, I'll try and bring on to a little bit more of abduction and then continue again to do a few more inferior glides. And that is how we do inferior glide to increase shoulder abduction. Thank you.